Hey guys, let's talk about fetal measurements. We're gonna go over the four most common fetal measurements sonographers take that help us determine fetal age and growth. And those are gonna be biparietal diameter, head circumference, abdominal circumference, and femur length. So before we get started, quick side note from high school geometry class. So glad that picture of me made it into my senior year book for all of posterity, by the way. So just a quick refresher of diameter and circumference. Diameter is going to be a straight line that passes through the center of an object, usually a circle. Um, and a circumference is going to be a measurement that goes around that outer perimeter of the circle or object that you're measuring. The first measurement I want to go over is biparietal diameter, sometimes referred to as BPD. This is a widely accepted measurement for estimating fetal age. Uh, the biparietal diameter is fairly accurate for dating fetal ages between 17 and 26 weeks gestation. After 26 weeks, it can become a little less accurate due to an increase in biological variability, um, but you should still try and obtain it even after 26 weeks. So to get our biparietal diameter measurement, we're going to image the fetal head in a transverse axial plane. Again, it's a diameter, so we know it's going to be a measurement from one side of the head to the other. So if you imagine putting a string at the top of your right ear straight across to the top of your left ear, that's roughly about the level that we're going to be taking our measurement. So to ensure that we're at the correct level, we need to make sure that we, are follow we have the following landmarks visible. So the first is going to be the falx. Um, that is this bright echogenic line that kind of separates the fetal head into left and right halves. The second landmark we're going to use is this little anechoic um, rectangular structure here. This is the cavum septum pellucidum. And this is going to be in the in midline, right where the falx is. Sometimes you'll even see a uh, linear structure running through it. And this is going to be slightly anterior in the fetal brain. The third landmark we want to use is the thalamus. And that's going to be this kind of hypoechoic structure right here. Fun fact, starting out, if you're having a difficult time determining where the front of the baby's head is versus where the back of the baby's head is, just by looking at the brain anatomy, if you look at the thalamus, it kind of makes an arrow shape and that arrow is always going to point towards the back of the baby's head. Let's take a closer look at this picture. Here we see we have the, the falx, our first landmark. We also have the cavum septum pellucidum, that little anechoic area there, our thalamus. So we have all three landmarks that we look for when taking the biparietal diameter. However, we see this kind of peanut structure here. And that's the child's cerebellum, and that's going to tell us that we're not quite at the right angle for taking our biparietal diameter. If you're seeing the cerebellum, we're actually kind of angled back on the baby's head, more towards the neck. We want to have a straight across angle for our biparietal diameter measurement. Once we have all our landmarks and we're unsure that we're at the correct level, let's see the proper way to measure. So we're gonna place our calipers leading edge to leading edge. This means right at the first edge of the parietal bone that we see up here on the outer edge of the skull, we're gonna place our first caliper there and then go straight across and put our second caliper at the inside edge of the skull. You should measure at the widest part of the baby's head. And this is usually gonna be about where the baby's ears are. This first measurement should start at the skull bone and not include the soft tissue of the fetus's scalp. Whew. So we have our first measurement. Now we're going to look at taking a head circumference. This is going to be really easy. We take it at the exact same level. In fact, the, we use the exact same image that we obtained our biparietal diameter with. And head circumference is also going to be helping us in assess fetal age. But we just took a head measurement to determine age. Why are we doing it again? Well, because the biparietal diameter measurement can be affected if the fetal skull is being compressed, which is quite common. 
and getting the circumference helps overcome the issues of the fetal skull being squashed. Head circumference is obtained by placing an ellipse around the outer portion of the skull bones. Again, we don't want to include the scalp. Kind of imagine if you, as if you were putting a tape measure around your head to measure yourself for a new hat. It would be about the same level, right above the ears. Okay, so moving on to our third measurement, abdominal circumference. This measurement's going to be less useful in determining fetal age, but very helpful in determining fetal weight, especially as the pregnancy progresses. And that makes sense, right? Imagine if you measure my waist with... Actually, don't imagine that. <laughs> Thanksgiving just happened and I'm a little sensitive. Let's use Mrs. Barnett. Let's say you put a tape measure around Mrs. Barnett's waist. That's not going to give us much information about her age, is it? But it would give us some information that might be helpful in determining more about her weight. So abdominal circumference is going to be measured in the transverse plane at the level of about the baby's belly button or where its belly button is going to be once it's born. And we're going to include three landmarks. First is going to be this anechoic structure here. This is the baby's stomach bubble. Secondly, we're going to have the fetal spine. And also we're going to include this anechoic J-shaped structure here, which is the portal vein. Once you're at the correct level with the landmarks, you want the abdomen to appear as circular as possible. If you have an oval shape, that's going to indicate an oblique cut, which is going to give you a false measurement. And just like with head circumference, we want to use an ellipse to measure around the fetal abdomen. And when you're doing your fetal abdomen measurement, you're going to include the skin line. Last but not least, we're going to talk about femur length. Femur length is about as accurate as by parietal diameter in determining fetal age. And this can be useful when the head cannot be properly measured, either due to its position or a fetal head anomaly. To help locate the femur and ensure that it's the correct bone, it's recommended to find the fetal bladder in the transverse plane. And that's where you'll find the iliac crests, which are these bright echogenic linear structures here. Most of the time, the iliacs will be at the same level as the bladder. Sometimes you may have to slightly angle inferior on the fetus. But once you get one of the iliac crests in, you're going to slowly rotate your probe on it to get the femur to come into view. You want to make sure that you're visualizing it in its full length and the end should be distinct and blunt. We measure the femoral diaphysis, which is the calcified portion of the femur. So our caliper should be placed at the major trochanter, which is going to be right here, and go straight across down to the external condyle, which is going to be right about here. And it's important to note that this measurement does not include the distal femoral point, which is going to be this little triangular shape here. That may give you an overestimation for your measurement. And that's a brief overview of the four most common fetal measurements. Does anybody have any questions for me?